All right. It is my honor to introduce our golden guest, Lark Dolly, distinguished Toastmaster. Lark served as the 2018-2019 Toastmasters International President. She lives in a lighthouse home outside of Austin, overlooking Lake Travis. The, the home was built by her late husband, Roger, in honor of her late father-in-law, Arthur. Lark often wears golden attire to symbolize the benefits of Toastmasters to our personal and professional development. You will notice that her golden jacket today. Please welcome our golden speaker, Lark Dolly, with her presentation entitled, Golden Leadership Principles. Take it away, Lark. Thank you so much, Wafa. Golden Greetings, District 55. Well, as you can tell by my background, I'm not actually home. I am in Nice, France, enjoying a vacation here. That was my Christmas present to myself. And the view that you see in my background is actually from the living room of the house where I'm staying. It is gorgeous. You can see the Mediterranean from the living room and you can see the mountains from the living room. So it is a beautiful view. Yes, when I'm home, I have my lighthouse view, but I can tell you this is just picturesque. So I invite you to join me today from Nice, France to discuss golden leadership principles. It is hard for me to actually believe that in September of 2021, I celebrated my 31st anniversary in Toastmasters. It seems like yesterday that I joined the organization, but when I look back at photographs of 31 years ago, I guarantee you that time has definitely passed. But today, I look forward to sharing with you some of the leadership principles that I have learned in my journey in Toastmasters. Can't share 31 years worth, but hopefully seven leadership principles will emerge that we can discuss today. So I'd ask all of you to mute, except for Wafa and myself, but I want to begin by finding out more about each of you. And so it is my honor to have as my chat master today, our Zoom master, who's also serving as my chat master, and that is Wafa Owen. And so during the presentation today, I want to interact with all of you in the chat. Yes, I'd love to be able to interact with you by having you actually speak, but I think for all of us, it'll be easier if you enter your answers into the chat. And that way, all of us can see every person's answer today. So my first question for all of you to enter into the chat is, why did you join Toastmasters? Or if you've been in Toastmasters five years or more, why do you stay? So very succinctly using a phrase or two, enter why you joined or why you stay into the chat. And Wafa, as my chat master, is going to read some of your answers, but because all of you can see the chat, you can actually see all of the responses. And by the way, at the end of our meeting today, if you want, you could save the chat if you'd like to review the responses later on. So Wafa, why are people saying they either join Toastmasters or they stay in Toastmasters? To get a promotion, to get over my fear of public speaking, to face challenges, hoping to help me in my career growth, communication skills, better speaking skills, different ways to communicate. So most of them are for communication skills. Thanks so much, Wafa. And absolutely, I did the same. I joined our organization initially to improve my communication skills. And why do I stay? Because I love seeing other people develop their skills in Toastmasters. Now let's go to the second question. What skills have you developed through Toastmasters? So when you think about the time that you've been in this organization, what are some of the specific skills that you have learned? And the more specific you can be, the better for all of us. So again, in the chat, type the skills that you 
learned. I tell you that listening and thinking skills for me have big have been the biggest skills that I have developed, and I am still developing those skills. I have to remember to think and listen before I speak in this organization and to all of my friends, family, and to the people with whom I worked. All right, so Wafa, what are they saying in the chat are the skills that they have developed in Toastmasters? Organization presentation, gained more confidence, telling or weaving stories into my presentation, listening. Okay, and just give me one more. Time management and impromptu speaking, self-awareness, storytelling, clearer communication. So the majority are still focusing on better communication. Great, thanks Wapa so much. And now when we think about the next question, what leadership positions have you held in Toastmasters? So what I'd like you to do is to put the lowest level of leadership that you have completed in this organization. Since we are a member-driven organization, uh, leadership positions that we have held go lower in the organization. So I've actually been at the bottom of the organization. Masters, I've been president of this organization. But what about you? What is either the last leadership position that you've held or the lowest one on the ladder of organization and And Wafa, tell us what they're saying. All right, district governor, vice president of the membership, president, Sergeant Arms, VP Ed, area governor, Sergeant Arms and VP of Ed. That sounds great, thanks Wafa. There are so many leadership opportunities in this organization, and we certainly have a good variety of leadership positions today. When you think about leadership and the skills that you've learned in leadership in this organization, what are some of those specific leadership skills? So enter into the chat a leadership skill that you have developed in Toastmasters. And while you're doing that, I'll just say to you that I believe collaborative leadership is one of the skills that I've learned in this organization. And the fact that we need to lead by example. Wafa, what are they saying in the chat? Listening, motivating others, mentoring, inspiring others, better communication, disagreeing with people, getting to disagree with people and come to a conclusion. Teamwork, Ooh. organizing events, assertiveness. Oh. That's uh, I like that one. That's and it I for like now. being able to manage disagreement, right? Disagreement is fine as long as we can come to a conclusion and focus on the mission and the goals of our organization. So my final question on this slide is, what is your next golden step in Toastmasters leadership? We are always looking for leaders at every level of our organization, at the club, area, division, district. There are so many leadership opportunities available to us. So in the chat, if you would, type in the leadership position that you would be willing to hold in this organization. When I think about it, I love serving in club leadership roles. I would love to be an area director again. And there's another leadership role that I loved in the district. And that was when we did hold in-person conferences. I loved being the logistics chair for the physical on-site location. Not sure I'd be capable of doing that anymore since I think most conventions in the future hybrid, but the bottom line is I loved being the logistics chair for conferences in the past. WAPA, what are they saying about leadership positions and Toastmasters they would be willing to fill, to fill in the future? Area director, division director. That's all I see for now. Okay, 
Love that. So WAPA is going to let you know later on in our program how you can let her know if you are interested in a district leadership position, especially those of area director or division director. So we will definitely get your name and information if she doesn't already have that information from you. Thank you for introducing yourselves to me. And of course, I know many of you and I'm so delighted to be back with you. These are the seven leadership principles or C words that I will discuss with you today. And I hope that all of you recognize this district executive team. It is the District 55 executive team. And I think they believe in the golden principles of leadership. And I hope at the end of this, you will too. The first golden principle of leadership is communication. When you think about the different ways that we communicate in the 21st century, what are those ways we communicate? There are certainly a lot more ways available to us to communicate than in the 20th century. So in the chat, I want you to type the most frequent methods you use to communicate. So type in the most frequent methods you use for communication in today's world. Type those into the chat. And I'll mention two that I am using, especially since I'm located in France right now. One is Zoom, as we are doing today. Another is WhatsApp. And a third is a program called Signal that I've been using for communication as well. So Zoom, WhatsApp, and Signal are ways I'm communicating while I'm over in France. Wafa, what are they saying about the forms of communication they are using? Email, Zoom, text, Messenger, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Microsoft Teams. So I guess uh, many of us are using the uh, video, I guess. But <laughs> uh, so uh, another one is Slack. That's oh, it. that's another one. That's right. Thanks so much, Wapa. So when we think about these different forms of communication, how does Toastmasters help us be more effective with any of these forms of communication? And when you think about how effective you are as a communicator today versus before you joined Toastmasters, how effective are you? So I think about the practice and the feedback that we receive through Toastmasters and how valuable that is to us in truly every form of communication that we use. And when I think about how effective I was before Toastmasters and how effective I am now, I think I am much more effective. However, that being said, every single day, I have the opportunity to improve the way that I communicate. I will mention to you just recently, I have made some mistakes in written communication. And again, I have realized that clarity in written communication is critical to our effectiveness and our success. So when we think about our different communication styles, I don't know about you, but I love to take communication style assessments and there are many of them available. Today, I'll talk to you about one of those communication style assess assessments. And it is the one that divides communication styles up into four different styles. And the first one is the driver style. The driver, the direct communicator, the communicator that minces no words, that says very succinctly exactly what they are thinking when they are thinking it without the need for long explanations. The driver communicator focuses on the present and focuses on achieving results. Are you a driver communicator? 
or are you an analytical communicator? And now the analytical communicator analyzes the facts before presenting any position. And then when they present the position, they reinforce their position by stating the facts. Are you an analytical communicator? An analytical communicator focuses on the past to drive future results. Or are you an amiable communicator? So the amiable communicator is the team player who supports the team, often at the cost to themselves, often to their detriment. They avoid conflict at all costs and they focus purely on supporting the team. So are you an amiable communicator? Or are you an expressive communicator? The expressive communicator is the cheerleader, the intuitor, the extrovert, the futurist, who speaks before they think, but through their Toastmasters experience, they're learning to think before they speak. So are you the expressive communicator? We communicate in one form or another from the time we wake up in the morning until the time we fall asleep at night. Communication is truly the foundation of everything that we do. And we all have our own communication styles. Many of us have a primary style and a secondary style. So when you think about your style of communication, are you a driver? Are you an analytical communicator, an amiable communicator, or an expressive communicator? So now in the chat, if you are willing to share what you think is your dominant communication style, then please share it. If you would like to put your dominant and your secondary communication style, then you go ahead and put two of them. And while you're doing that, I'll just say to all of you, I'm the expressive communicator. I'm the extrovert. I'm the one who speaks before she thinks, but I'm learning to think before I speak. And Toastmasters is helping me with that. All right. So WAPA, what type of communicators do we have in our audience today? So the majority use analytical. Number two is expressive. I have some drivers. Amiable and analytical, driver and analytical, amiable, that's uh, the majority. So it sounds like we have some of each. To be an effective communicator, we should adapt our communication style to the communication style of the person with whom we're communicating. And if we're in a big audience, then it's great to engage all of the different communication styles. But when you think about your communication style versus the communication style of those with whom you interact, to be most effective, you should adapt your style. So as an expressive communicator, when I am talking to an analytical communicator, I need to calm down some of that cheerleading, some of that extrovert personality. And I need to state the facts, the background behind why I'd like to do certain things, behind the task that I may be asking them to do. They need to understand why I'm asking them to do those things. To the driver, simply give them the task and let them go off and execute the task. And for those amiable communicators, just let them know what will support the team and they will take care of that. So when you think about your communication style versus those with whom you interact, if you can adapt your style to that of those individuals, you will be more effective. The very first communication priority of a leader is to communicate their vision. But in order to communicate this effectively, they need to engage the team. And the way to engage the team in creating and developing the vision and in setting the goals for the vision is to use those communication styles in order to engage the team members. So when you're communicating with your team, consider their styles 
And if you are communicating individually with team members, be sure that you are adapting to their communication style when you're discussing the vision and the goals that they need to achieve in order for you to fulfill that vision. So why do I spend so much time on communication, the golden key to leadership? It's because it is truly the foundation of every other golden leadership principle. Communication, the number one golden key to leadership. The second key to golden leadership is commitment. And I love this quote, commitment is an act not a word. When we think about our commitments to our careers, to our families, to our friends, to our community, to Toastmasters, we are judged by our actions. We are evaluated by our actions. Our actions demonstrate our level of commitment to our careers, to our family, friends, community, and to Toastmasters. So when you think about your commitment and you think about the actions that you are taking, do your actions match your level of commitment? This is the District 55 Executive Leadership Team. They are committed to your success as members, as leaders in your clubs, areas, divisions, and in our district. If you need something, they are here to serve our organization and specifically to serve the members, clubs, areas, and divisions in District 55. There are over 100,000 leaders in our organization annually. When you think about over 15,000 clubs and those clubs having seven club officers and then those clubs being organized into areas and areas organized into divisions, divisions organized into districts, just think about the numbers of leaders it takes in order to serve our worldwide organization. We are so grateful to the committed leaders at every level of our organization. And so this is the Division F and G teams. This is the H and I teams, the J and K teams, and finally the Division L team. So your club is a member of an area, member of a division. And if you are members of more than one club, you could belong to multiple areas and multiple divisions. But at every level of our organization, there are leadership opportunities. And by the way, on our district website at tmd55.org, you can see all of these different leaders and the leadership positions within our district. The organization chart for Toastmasters. So as I mentioned, the member is at the top of our organization chart and the president of our organization is at the bottom of that chart. Every single leader within our organization is a volunteer leader who does not get paid a salary. The only paid staff is at our world headquarters in Inglewood, Colorado. And that those are the only individuals who are paid in our organization. Otherwise, we all volunteer of our time and energy to this organization. And again, we are grateful for every golden leader who supports us at every level of our organization. As Wafa introduced herself, she is the co-chair with Umberto of the District 55 Leadership Committee. And they are looking for leaders to serve our district next year. Specifically, they are looking for district director, program quality director, club growth director. They're looking for division directors, but they are so willing to hear from you about any leadership position you're interested in holding for the district. And WAPA is going to enter into the chat 
the address where you can send your interest. And Wafa, do you want to mention a little bit about that as we on this slide before Thank we you. move on? Thank you, Lark. So I just posted on uh, through the chat the email that you can reach out to us. My co-chair is Umberto Bella, Distinguished Toastmaster, and he's on this call, or myself. We share the same email address, dlcd55 at tmd55.org. We'll be happy to answer any questions you may have, provide you with the tools and the resources so you can make an informative decision. I also shared with you the link to our district website. On the home page, you will see an image with, uh, I believe it, the title is Call for Nominations, and the email address is there. But under the, the image, we also have links to all the resources and the tools for you to understand better every role and the requirements, the qualifications, the competencies, and also the forms to fill out. The deadline to submit the applications is February 15th. Back to you, Lark. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. And thanks to the District 55 Leadership Committee, the co-chairs and the members of the committee for your diligent work in recruiting, grooming new leaders for our district. Thank you all. And again, She's entered the information into the chat. So those of you who are interested in leadership positions, please do contact them and let them know. So now I want to find out even more about you regarding your personal and professional goals. So in the January issue of the Toastmasters magazine, they talked about really purpose-driven goals. And I hope that all of you have had the opportunity to read that article. It talked about our purpose-filled life and what we want to achieve in our life. I will tell you, I retired in March of 2021. So my life has taken on a different perspective in the last year. And I'm very grateful for the opportunities that I now have to pursue Toastmasters involvement as well as other nonprofit involvements. But I want you to think about a personal and professional goal. As WAPA has stated, there are so many leadership opportunities available to you. Certainly they begin at the club level, but there are so many district level opportunities for leadership. And so please let us know what you would like to do within our organization. But right now, if you are willing to share, type in the chat a personal or a professional goal, or both if you'd like, but type into the chat a personal or professional goal. As I've mentioned, I certainly want to become more involved in District 55 activities. I have been very active at the international level for the last seven years. And my responsibilities at the international level do end in June of this year. So after that, I can become more involved at the local level. But I also want to investigate other opportunities within the community. I've thought about Rotary because of our connection as an organization with them, but also because of what I saw of Rotary when I had the privilege to attend their convention in Hamburg, Germany. So those are some ideas that I have about my personal goals. What about your personal or professional goals? So WAPA, what are they entering into the chat? Well, goal, in, intentional actions with purpose. More fun time spent with family and friends. Financial freedom, create stuff. That, now that's an interesting one, create stuff. Okay, I have to get back yeah. to them. All right, what else? <laughs> I like Anything? to hear from I like to hear from Brent. What is your goal or one of your goals? Uh, yeah, okay, he see. just he just responded, improve my physical and mental well-being. Oh, I love that one, Brett. Thank you for sharing that with us. Absolutely. So in times of the pandemic, we absolutely need to think about that. So Brett, thank you so much for sharing that. Well, again, I'm not going to force you to share your personal or professional goals, <clears throat> but the bottom line is January is always the time that we 
decide on our New Year's resolutions. One of the items in the article was, if we will focus on goals that help us achieve our purpose, then that will help us to commit and to achieve those goals. So to commit and act on them. And this golden leadership principle is all about commitment. And as we've said, commitment takes actions. So my next comment for you is what actions do you need to take in order to fulfill your commitment to these goals? I'm not going to make you type into the chat the actions, but what I say to you is you do need to decide what those actions are that you need to take in order to achieve the commitments that you need to make to yourself. And when you're making commitments to yourself, those commitments are also essentially to your family and friends, because if you achieve your goals, your commitments, it's going to influence and impact them as well. So think about the actions that you need to take. Write them down. Very important to write them down and then be sure that you take those actions. But while you're doing all of this brainstorming about your goals, how can Toastmasters help you? When you think about our Pathways program, there are so many opportunities within Pathways to improve ourselves personally and professionally. So how can Toastmasters help? And then when you think about the leadership opportunities and the skills that we gain from those leadership opportunities, again, how does that fit into your plans for personal and professional growth? Let our organization and our programs support your personal and professional goals. And then think about mentors who can support you in these personal and professional goals. So I have had mentors at every level of our organization, and I encourage all of us to have mentors throughout our Toastmasters journey, throughout our professional journey. So think about the individuals you trust to be a mentor for you in this organization. I love this Mario Andretti quote. Desire is the key to motivation, but it's determination and commitment to an unrelenting pursuit of your goal, a commitment to excellence that will enable you to attain the success that you seek. The number one leadership principle was communication. The number two leadership principle is commitment. Let's move on to the number three golden leadership principle, and that is collaboration. In the chat, I want you to type in your definition of the word collaboration. So type into the chat your definition of the word collaboration. What does collaboration mean to you? And Wafa, as they're typing in their responses, I'd like you to read them off. Working together, getting it together, and making it happen. Working with others to achieve common goals. Teamwork, respecting everyone's viewpoint. Cooperation, to network and work together. A lot of them are talking about uh, teamwork. Beautiful. I knew this was an intelligent group. And absolutely, it is teamwork, cooperation, leveraging the strengths of the team, respecting the diversity of the team, and integrating those diverse perspectives into the goals and into the fulfillment of those goals. So absolutely, every one of those definitions in the chat is exactly what collaboration means. I thought this was an interesting definition of collaboration. And because this was from Michael Dell, I thought I would share it with all of you since Michael happens to be from our district. And that is collaboration equals innovation. And when I thought about it, and I thought about the fact that we're talking about teamwork, cooperation, leveraging strengths, diverse perspectives, integrating all of those to fulfill our goals, I thought, yeah, That would equal to innovation in my book. I don't know about you, but I think that absolutely collaboration can equal innovation. When I think about our district and I think about the different district chairs, I think about collaboration. 
These individuals shown here are chairs, which means they must have a team and they must collaborate with that team in order to achieve the goals of the committee or the team that they're chairing. So we've talked about Wava and Umberto and they are the leadership committee co-chairs. They are identifying recruiting leaders for our district for next year. So they have a team of individuals that I showed you that are their committee. And then we look at the credentials chair, audit chair, membership recognition chair, mentor, member mentor chair. All of these different chairs have a team of people that they are collaborating with in order to achieve the goals of their team or their committee. The District 55 Education and Training Chairs. Did you know that every single week there is a continuing education opportunity for you? Well, there is. And I looked at this, the first Mondays are membership building, second Tuesdays, leadership building, third Wednesdays, marketing, fourth Thursday, basic speaking skills and techniques, final Friday, office hours. So there are so many opportunities outside of our clubs where we can grow and develop and improve our skills in communication and in leadership. And then the Toastmasters Leadership Institutes. Again, we have a TLI chair. We have a continuing education chair. We have a conference chair. We have all of these different chairs that chair teams of individuals to collaborate and make our district successful. The club growth chairs. So you, we have the club growth director. We have the club growth chairs, right? The new clubs that have been chartered. So for education and training, we have our program quality director. For club growth, we have our club growth director. For public relations, we have our public relations manager. And again, we have all of these chairs that lead teams to help our district be successful, to help us share the gold of Toastmasters with more and more people. The collaboration that is required in order to publish a monthly newsletter, a mid-month newsletter. Again, collaboration is key here. District conferences, the virtual conference last year, the hybrid conference this year, these take collaborative teams in order to make these, these events successful. So collaboration, it is absolutely teamwork, cooperation, leveraging strengths toward the common goals. But where does collaboration begin? In our organization, it begins with our core values. It begins with integrity in every endeavor. It begins with respect, service, and excellence. If we are fulfilling the core values of our organization, then we will have a collaborative leadership style. Collaboration has no room for ego. Communication is the fuel for collaboration. Ego drives out collaboration. So it is so important that we are a servant leadership organization. Collaboration is the number three golden key to leadership. But have you ever experienced conflict? Have you experienced conflict in our organization? Have you experienced conflict in your careers? I certainly have. And what I would say to you is that our definition of conflict is a negative definition. It is the absence of communication. It is negative, it is destructive. It is discord, struggle, it is ego driven. The fuel of conflict is ego. The fuel of collaboration is communication. So within our organization, when we see conflict, we need to disarm it and identify it immediately. We need to communicate with those with whom we're having the conflict and we need to accept mediation if necessary in order to achieve collaboration and remove the conflict. The absence of conflict is a golden key to leadership. 
Our words and our actions must positively support the mission of our organization. So I've experienced conflict in my work with individuals, but I always immediately address it. And I always do my job. I always fulfill the goals of my job. And that's what we have to do as members and leaders and Toastmasters. We need to identify the conflict and we need to address the conflict and we need to remove the conflict and collaborate in order to achieve the mission of our organization. Change. We are living in uncertain times. We are living in turbulent times. We have definitely experienced the storms of change. But what is so beautiful is that we also see the rainbow of hope. And for me, the golden pot of opportunities at that end of the, of the rainbow. So for our organization, change is inevitable. We join Toastmasters to change. And when you think about the positive changes that you've made in your life as a result of Toastmasters and the skills that you have gained, they're bountiful. So we need to look at change as positive. Absolutely, the pandemic was so difficult for our organization, for all of us personally, some of us more than others. But we had to adapt to the pandemic. We had to respond positively to the pandemic. It's interesting when we're faced with change, we can either react negatively to it. And these are some of the negative reactions to change. I will tell you that I denied that the pandemic was going to be long term. It is so fortunate for our organization that I wasn't president during the pandemic because I thought, oh, we'll suffer from this for a month, maybe two months. But we're now past our second year in this pandemic and we're still suffering from it. So I was definitely in denial. And then I think I had the fear of it and the panic of it. But now that we've acknowledged the pandemic and now that we've acknowledged what we need to do in order to face it, in order to adapt to it, we're in a much better position as an organization. And I hope that all of us are in a better position personally from it. So the positive reaction to change is the number five golden key to leadership. Wafa was so kind to send me a picture of her club, the Lakeline Toastmasters. And when I think about the fact that our clubs had to go online, they had to adapt and go online. And now we have many clubs that are meeting in a hybrid format. And then we do have other clubs around the world that are actually meeting in person and only in person now. But the bottom line is when the pandemic reached us, we adapted and we held our meetings online for the benefits of our members. And as the pandemic ebbs and flows, hopefully we will have more in-person events and some clubs will be in person only. I believe my clubs will probably be hybrid in format for the future, but I love the fact that we adapted and we adapted so quickly. Change, then courage. I was at the March 2020 board meeting, my last board meeting with Toastmasters when the pandemic struck. And I will tell you that we reacted quickly. And I hope that those of you who are members at that time believe that we reacted swiftly. The president at that time was Deepak Menon and I called him the president courageous. One of our international directors, Aletta Rocha at the time said, let's call him Captain Courageous because he was captaining the ship in the stormy seas. And so we called him Captain Courageous. We moved our clubs online, we moved our contests online, we moved our conferences online in just a matter of days. We communicated that to our members worldwide. Richard Peck, Toastmasters International President, 2020 to 2021, visited the world of Toastmasters online. 
he visited clubs in 143 countries last year. And as I have said to all of you have hopefully heard me say this, we have the golden opportunity to visit clubs around the world who are still meeting online or in a hybrid format. And I encourage all of you to do this. I encourage all of you to visit clubs around the world and gain a global perspective on our organization. President Deepak Menon, President Richard Peck had the courage to move our organization online and to make the decisions, the tough decisions that needed to be made in the time of adversity to move our organization forward. Golden leaders face adversity and make the tough decisions. What tough decisions have you had to make as a leader in this organization or a leader in your work or a leader in other organizations. Courage to face adversity and to make the tough decisions. I love the fact that we're meeting online or that we have a hybrid format. I will tell you, I recently attended a hybrid meeting in Lebanon. So my nephew lives in Lebanon and he invited me to attend his Toastmasters meeting, a hybrid meeting. It was so much fun to be able to do that. And it was actually a meeting where they were dressed in costumes. So we had a lot of fun doing that. But when you think about how we are reacting differently and, and, and acting differently with our new format, we've adapted to it. And for the hybrid meetings, there's more technology that is needed in order, order to conduct a successful hybrid meeting. But I hope that those of you who are conducting hybrid meetings are leveraging those technologists within your clubs in order to have successful hybrid meetings. And if you're doing your meetings still online, then again, we've learned so much about the capabilities of Zoom and those abilities to use Zoom effectively and appropriately in our club meetings. I am so grateful that our organization had the foresight to plan an online educational platform, Pathways. Did we have a rocky start with Pathways? Yes. Are there still more opportunities for improvement of Pathways? Yes. But Pathways, our online educational program that has multiple competencies built into every single path in Pathways. We currently have 11 paths in Pathways, but we have an opportunity for so many more paths in our educational program. And I hope that you are enjoying your journey in Pathways. So our number six golden key was courage. Our final golden key to leadership is celebration. Once we have achieved our goals, it is so important that we celebrate those. And we should celebrate our achievements at every level of our organization. At the club level, are you celebrating the achievements of the members of your are you celebrating the achievements of your club? So think about how you can celebrate and recognize club and member achievements at the club level. But then our district held a celebration event. And again, this was a hybrid event to celebrate and recognize the achievements of our members and clubs. And I love the fact that they had people present who walked on stage and they celebrated the club achievements. And then the distinguished Toastmasters in our organization. I hope that each of you wants to achieve the distinguished Toastmaster designation and be recognized for it. And I'm so glad that Kathy sent me the link to all of the photographs of those who achieved their distinguished Toastmaster designation and were recognized at this event. Celebration is the number seven golden key to leadership. And District 55 is planning to recognize some interesting achievements this year. So 
Outstanding Member Promotion, and Volunteer of the Year. These are District 55 promotions, and I hope that you will think about fulfilling these and being recognized for these. Toastmasters International is always thinking about new recognitions at the international level, and so keep posted on those as well. Celebration, the number seven key to golden leadership. So do you remember the seven keys to golden leadership? Well, they begin with communication and communication is the foundation of leadership. Commitment is the second key and it is fulfilled through our actions and it is evaluated through our actions. Collaboration begins with our core values. Communication is the fuel for collaboration. Conflict vanishes when we collaborate. Conflict is fueled by ego and ends with collaboration. Change, it spurs us to grow, to develop ourselves. It spurs our creativity and it spurs innovation. Courage is required to face adversities and to make the tough decisions. And finally, celebration recognizes achievement. These are the seven golden keys to leadership. In our organization, we have clubs, areas, divisions, districts, regions, and then our international organization. There are 14 regions globally. There are 22 region advisors, which is another leadership opportunity in our organization. And District 55 has had many region advisors for which I am so grateful. There are 124 districts worldwide. At the international level, our international president this year is Margaret Page. Our international director for our region three is Michael Holian. So international leadership all the way to club leadership opportunities are available to each and every one of us. My favorite leadership quote is by John Quincy Adams. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you are a leader. So members of District 55 present today, what is your next golden step in Toastmasters? And will you use the seven golden principles of leadership as you lead in Toastmasters, in your career, in our communities? It has been my golden honor to be with you today. I am so grateful to my golden chat master, Wafa Owen, who was the 2019-2020 District 55 Director and is the current co-chair of the District 55 Leadership Committee. Thank you all for your presence today. And now, Madam Golden Chatmaster, I would be happy to answer questions if there are any. Thank you so much, Lark. Let's give her a big hand. We appreciate you joining us from your vacation in beautiful Nice in France. Thank you for your support, your encouragement, and your leadership. And now, if um, you would like to either post your question in the chat or maybe raise your hand and ask directly Lark if you have any questions. And so you can read them if there are any, or again, if not, that's okay too, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Lark, I have a question. Okay, go for it. Okay, what is the best memory from your leadership journey? Oh my gosh. Well, I will tell you, I am so fortunate. I was the last Toastmasters president that actually was able to physically travel around the world. And I spent nine weeks traveling. My my manager at Maximus allowed me to take those nine weeks off. And 
I had incredible experiences around the world. I traveled to New Zealand, Taiwan, China, Australia, Germany, India, Sri Lanka, Sweden, I, I, Denmark. I had such an opportunity that year to travel to so many different places around the globe. And those memories and those moments were pure gold. Now, I hope this year that Margaret gets to travel. I know last year Richard did go to Africa, but I don't know how much traveling is happening this year again since the pandemic is still rampant around the world. I'm not sure how much traveling they're doing, but thank you for asking. I had many, many golden moments during my travel experiences when I was president. All right, someone would like to know what's your favorite leadership position? Ah, uh, okay, I always say this and I didn't mention it today, so thanks for asking. I will tell you that area director is still my favorite leadership position. And the reason for that is that you absolutely can touch the clubs and the members within your area. So at the international president level, I was fortunate, obviously, to have that position and to be able to communicate with the world. But as an area director, you literally see what you're able to accomplish with the clubs in your area. You're able to touch them and support them. Whatever it is they need, you can individualize your approach to each of those clubs. So area director is a wonderful leadership position. What is the biggest conflict you had that you can talk about and how, or have, what have you learned from it? Yeah, well, I will tell you that I absolutely did have a conflict within my trio and I'm sure the person probably wouldn't mind. I'm not going to mention names, but I did have a conflict within the trio. And that was very, very difficult for me. But we did meet and talk about it. We agreed to disagree. So unfortunately, we didn't come to an agreement. We agreed to disagree, but it was very difficult. And so I, I say about conflict, it is so important that you address it. Don't let it fester. You must address it. And it's not about personalities. It's about the goals that we want to achieve, right? It's about our vision and our mission in this organization. And if we can put aside our egos, our personality conflicts, and focus on the mission, we can be successful. Whether we like one another or not, it's not about whether we like one another. It's about achieving the mission of our organization. And that's what I would say. But yeah. What Thank made you, you decide to engage in district leadership as division director? Why did I decide? What made you decide? Okay, I will tell you that people encouraging me, and I would say to each and every one of us, please, please encourage individuals to pursue future leadership in our organization. If an individual hadn't tapped me on the shoulder and said, Lark, you can do this. I would never have become a division director, would not have pursued district leadership, would never have thought about international director and international president. Are you kidding? So it is so important that we say to individuals, I believe in you. You have leadership potential. I know you can do this. I'm here to support you. Tell people when you recognize leadership potential in them, it is critical to do that. Thanks for asking. What few words and thoughts you have about persevering as a leader? Absolutely, perseverance. I use the C commitment for that because I wanted to have seven Cs, but perseverance, especially during this pandemic time has been amazing to me. And what I would say is that we need to persevere, but we need to persevere with our team. And we need to acknowledge our team. We need to recognize our team. We can't do anything without a team. So it's so important that we collaborate in order to persevere, right? All of the words that I've used today, in order for us to persevere, we have to be committed to the vision, 
to the mission of our organization. We have to have a team and collaborate to get there. We have to be sure that we resolve any conflicts, that we adapt. Uh, we need to adapt. We need to set our direction and have goals for that, persevere to those goals, but be willing to change direction at a moment's notice if we're not moving toward our goals. So perseverance, absolutely. And as I said, I think I use the word commitment for perseverance, but we have to take the actions to achieve our goals and we have to have those goals and persevere with our team. Yeah. It is 11.01. We will have one last question and it is pertaining to membership. If you are not a current member, how do you decide which club to join? Oh my goodness. Well, go to find a club on the Toastmasters website is what I would say, or you can look at the District 55 website, right? But find a club, think about the day of the week and the time of day that is best for you. And then what I would also say is great opportunity to visit more than one club in order to find out the club that meets your, meets your needs and has your personality. So every single club in Toastmasters is unique and has its own personality. I do want you to join a fifth District 55 club just selfishly, but also the world is open to you. So join a club in District 55. And then if you wanna join a club someplace else around the globe, feel free to do that. But start with District 55 is what I would say. Thank Did you. I do that correctly, Wafa? Yes, you did. Thank you so much, Lark. Again, our heartfelt for your uh, guidance, your encouragement, your positiveness, your leadership and service to our district and our organization. So I know we're over uh, time, but I'd like to give an opportunity to my co-chair, Umberto Vela, to say a few words, and then we will, we will adjourn the meeting. Umberto, take it away, please. Thank you very much, Lark. And accustomed as I am to public speaking, <laughs> I do appreciate this opportunity. And Lark, again, thank you very much on behalf of all the people that are attending, and I'm sure all the people that they're going to share this information with. They, they came here because of one of the C's, because they're committed to District 55. They're committed to being better speakers. They're committed to learning all the time. And that's why they're here. And that's what I would like to encourage all of you that are at this meeting. If you are committed, which I know that you are because you are here present and listening to this and being envious of Lark being in Nice, France, as we sit here in District 55 in the cold weather. But if you are committed, if you are committed to this district and to yourself as a Toastmaster, or as a communicator, then you have to have the courage, the courage to get others to have the same commitment that you do. Build your team and they will help you to go forward. That is what we need now in the district because let's face it, I'm not the face of youth leadership anymore. I used to be at one time, but I'm not. And it takes youth and energy and courage and commitment to go forth and make this district a viable entity and a model for future districts and Toastmasters to grow. It take, I'll tell you one story. My granddaughter was 17 years old and visiting colleges in several parts of the United States, hoping to get into a medical school or a nursing program or something like that. She went to Fordham University in New York City because her brother lives in New York City. And she was touring there. And she is a product of youth leadership programs in our district. She attended some clubs here and some gavel clubs. And on a bulletin board in Fordham University, she saw this poster. And this poster advertised the Toastmasters Club at Fordham University. And she took a picture of it and sent it to me. And this thing was full of QR codes linking to the website, linking to their TikTok page, linking to their Instagram page. If you lock me in a room for a month, I could not come up with this poster. I'm <laughs> sure there are some of you in the audience now that can. I'm sure some of you know people who can. And those are the people we need leading our clubs 
into the next generation because this is a world of hybrid meetings. This is a world of Zoom meetings. This is a world of in-person meetings. And all of that can only be mastered by people to whom that is second nature. And those are the people we need. Whether you're as old as me and can spend a month in a locked room trying to figure out those QR codes and do it, or whether you're somebody who can do it in a snap of a finger. We need you. We need you to find your friends and your team who can help you along, encourage you the way people encourage Lark, say you can do this, and you help encourage them say you can do this. You've heard the information, you've seen where the websites are, you've got all that. Now we just need you to get out there and find us new leaders and have them go to that website and have them fill out those forms and have them volunteer and have the courage and the commitment that you have. Thank you for your time. And I wish I was in Nice with you, Lark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alberto. Appreciate it. All right, you heard him. We need talent and skills from leaders like you. Please, please consider serving our members and encourage your club members, your Toastmaster friends to step up and uh, help us uh, continue uh, toward our goals and uh, keeping our district dynamic and successful. With that, I thank you all for joining us this Saturday morning. Lark, we are jealous. It is freezing in Central <laughs> Texas. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is beautiful here. Well, everyone, I miss you all. Thank you so much for being present today. And step up to leadership. We need you. Bye, all everyone. Right. Bye, everyone. Stay warm. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And we hope to hear from you soon. Cal, thank you so much for uh, helping with the muting of the latecomers and uh, admitting some of them. Appreciate it. it oh, is, yeah. You know, my, until you do it. My pleasure. And you, you can stop it, recording now in case you oh, want to say anything. Yeah, sure. you know. <laughs>